Hey guys, how's it going? So today we've got three varieties of beautiful plants that all bloom purple throughout the summer. You can see I've parked here in the little bit of shade that these trees are giving us right now. 105 today, 107 tomorrow, 104 the next day. <laughs> then it looks like we are maybe gonna creep back down into the 80s. Anyway, look at these sweet purple flowers. This is a type of Campanula called Arctic Bells. It's a newer variety. Uh, it grows like six to 12 inches tall, upwards of two feet wide. Like this thing will get fairly decent sized. And because they stay on the short side and kind of creep around, they're really good for edges of borders and even like rock walls. We have some planted along the rock wall by our kitchen entrance kind of area, and they are gorgeous kind of cascading over and they provide so much color because they do come out early summer with this mass of purple blooms to where you almost can't see leaves. These poor things, they've been in containers all summer long and it's, you know, really hot. So they're looking a little bit stressed. They need to get in the ground. They're gonna be happy after today. And they do bloom throughout the summer, not as heavy as that first flush. And then they're gonna flush out here again really soon. If you look in here, you can see a few of those buds getting ready. Zone four through nine, and they can do full sun if they've got quite a bit of moisture. They don't wanna sit in water, like not a soggy, boggy situation, but they want consistent moisture, or if you can provide it just a little bit of protection in the afternoon, which is I think what we're gonna do with this. I think we're gonna put this on the west side where it gets a little bit of shade in the afternoon then it'll be a happy camper. Then we've got the Indiglo Girl Salvia. Now you're just gonna have to imagine, maybe we can put a picture on the screen of what these look like. We have, uh, I have planted these before. I have one in front of the chicken coop and then I had some of these in an area that we excavated. We have multiple areas that we have planted things and then decided to do something else. So usually I have friends or family come in and they take what they want out of the flower beds. So uh, my experience with these have, has been really good. I really like the thickness of the bloom spikes. Like some of them are really thin, but these are just so robust. And the leaves, I mean, the leaves are really broad and beautiful. They grow about 20 to 22 inches tall and wide and they're zoned three through eight, I think. Yeah three through eight, hardy to negative 40 degrees. They are a super tough plant. They like full, full sun. And they do come out early in the summer with that huge big boom of blooms. And then you can come in and shear the plant back, like shear off those spent bloom stalks and leave the leaf canopy. And they will rebloom again. And these will rebloom as well. But I usually prefer to come in and cut my salvia all the way back after that first flush of bloom. That way you get that fresh leaf canopy look. A lot of times if you leave those old bloom spikes, you kind of get this sort of look going on. See how that looks just a little tired? This is what you get when you cut them all the way back. It takes them longer to reflush bloom, but you get that really nice fresh canopy. Okay, and then our third is a shrub. This is an Asian moon butterfly bush. I think these are so beautiful. I love the soft lavender color. You know, we have several of the Miss Violet butterfly bush, which uh, is similar in size to this one, but it has dark purple blooms and I love those, but I love this lavender color. So we have a little bit of a variety out here. These grow about seven feet tall and seven feet wide and I've got five of them. So we're gonna have to put these somewhere where uh, they can really you know, have room to go. And uh, they are a zone five through 10. Leaf color in the fall is yellow. It's really pretty. They're really good thing about the butterfly bush is that they are very tolerant of poor soil and they're also tolerant of drier conditions once they've been established. The one thing about the butterfly bush that we do experience here in Eastern Oregon, where zone six, is some winter dieback. Uh, it's something that happens some years and some years it doesn't. The thing about butterfly bushes though is that you do wanna prune them. Uh, you wanna prune them as soon as you start seeing them push leaves in the spring. You can go in and kinda of cut them back to that first set of really strong leaves. And what that will do is help encourage a very dense, more robust plant and blooms at a level where you can actually enjoy them. Because what will happen, like on this one that grows seven feet tall by seven feet wide, if I never touch it, I don't prune it at all, will end up with blooms just at the very tippy top of the plant. And you can only really enjoy them from a second story window. So they call them second story plants. But if we keep them on a routine pruning schedule in the spring, then we will have a nicely shaped plant with blooms at a level where we can actually see them and enjoy them. And this last winter, going back to the dieback issue, we did have most of ours died all the way back down to the ground and we had to cut them off at ground level, but they did reflush most of them. Reflushed, beautiful growth, and they're already nice and big. It is a bit late in the season to be planting these. It is best to do butterfly bushes in the spring, but sometimes you just plant them when you can get your hands on them. So anyway, I'm just gonna go around. I think the butterfly bushes are gonna end up maybe back behind these limelight primes. So we'll have like a bank of butterfly bush right 
behind the bank of limelight primes and then the Indiglo girls i think i'm going to put out here and then the campanulas uh, on the west side let's go take a look over here quick okay so you can see the limelight prime hydrangeas and the sparkling amethyst right in front kind of thinking right back here i'm going to set them out and see if i like it first let's pop up front here oh my goodness i can't pop up front anymore i gotta go all the way around everything's so thick oh there's some miss violet badlias you guys these were all the way down to the ground this spring we had to cut them all the way back now look at them they're gorgeous and they're at a level where you can see the whole plant they're nice and dense Oh, so pretty. All right, so possibly right back behind those limelight primes, which we have thought about coming in with more of the primes and putting one in between. When we initially planted these, we had six on hand and I spaced them out a little bit more than six because I kind of wanted, I think they get four to six feet wide. I kind of wanted them to be their own individual thing rather than a hedge. I don't know though might be really beautiful as a hedge so we'll try them right behind there first see what we think we may end up kind of clustering them together somewhere else or maybe like popping one back in here and letting it kind of fill in that space uh, you know and there looks like there's a ton of purple here already because there is the sparkling amethyst superbina is an awesome annual but you know we probably won't come in with the same exact annual every single year and we may not even do annuals in this spot every single year it is gorgeous so gorgeous but anyway for long-term planning, we kind of just rely on what is perennial, what will come back every year, what colors those are. Another spot they would look really pretty is kind of tucked in right back in here. Hmm. And then real quick, I wanted to run over here and show you these are the Miss Violet. So you've got the nice saturated purple there. Every single one of these died back down to the ground. Every single one. Can you believe that? They're doing so great. All right, guys, so what I'm gonna do is just figure out where all these things are gonna go. We're gonna get them planted, get them watered in, uh, because it is so hot today. And then I'll give you a tour of where everything ended up. the butterfly bushes in and the salvias they both ended up in the same general location so I thought we'd take a quick break and take a look at those before we headed up to the west side to plant the campanulas but I gotta say I love where these ended up you gotta kind of take it in as you walk toward them you kind of rounding this corner and then oh look at them back there they are so pretty the thing I love about them so much is that they're so uh, delicate in comparison to the hydrangea. The hydrangeas are so high impact, but the butterfly bushes do not take away from that at all. They just add this nice accent back behind and you can kind of see I staggered them just a little bit. And I do need one more to pop right there. So I'll have my eyes open for that, but I just think that they are gorgeous. Oh, we do have a black lace elderberry right here, which will only get bigger than this. So that's definitely the end of where I could put anything back in there. And even though this Corinthian linden will eventually get seven, seven and a half feet from center, 15 foot wide. So it'll be seven and a half feet this way. So if I did pop another one back there, they might eventually compete, but I don't think much, especially if we keep the canopy lifted. And this is the only growth this tree has put on <laughs> in about three years. This year it decided just to shoot out a great big giant leader. It's 
going for it. And I think by having them staggered a little bit like this, it makes more sense to not put another hydrangea in here. I just think that might just congest it a little too much. Now that this butterfly bush can kind of grow in and fill in this little space and the ones that are, you know, planted kind of in line are bumped back further. I don't know, we'll see how it goes, but I think they're gorgeous. And then in this space right here, just a little bit away from where we just were, I've planted the, is there seven? Yeah, seven Indiglo Girl Salvia. We've got a huge space right here. I'm kind of planning on doing something in this loop. I've got to clear out some of the sumacs. I want to enjoy their fall color. They've really spread a lot. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I want to enjoy their fall show and then we'll start pulling them out and taming that back just a little bit. But either way, we've got some gorgeous Niagara Falls panicums right here. Aren't those beautiful? Oh, you know, I almost kind of want to put like another one here and kind of continue on just this great big continuous drift right here. We've got a Centara double blue lilac, which is doing really well. So we get some nice spring color. And then our Indiglo Girl Salvia, which are right by the Yellow Brick Road uh, Sedum right in here, which I think I'll probably get two more of those along the way. Or we might just divide these. We'll divide them and kind of move them around in this space so that this drift of salvia kind of tucks in back behind and this one kind of goes forward so that we're not like, you know, squares of plants. We kind of want them to go in and out of one another as they mature. Okay, so that's where we're at out here. Now we're gonna head up toward the house and maybe plant in a bit of shade. Get those campanulas in. I just can't get over that view. That is so pretty. I was noticing back over here that our snowball bush is popping out some more blooms. It's a little confused. I'll take it. That one's got a bloom too. Also, the annuals from this view right here. This is my favorite. Isn't that beautiful? The pink, the purple, the white, the chartreuse. <sighs> And there we have it, all 10 of the campanulas tucked in underneath the elderberry shrub that we trimmed into a tree not long ago. I actually had to trim a few branches off of it today because it had already started to kind of come back over the pathway. Plus, when these berries set, which they are absolutely gorgeous, so, so pretty, they do make the branches a little heavier. So oftentimes if you clip off some of those, the branch will kind of lift back up but it's kind of the perfect area because it's gonna get filtered sun in the morning, but then this shrub right here shades it in the afternoon. And it's a fairly moist area. In fact, this whole corner has kind of proven to be one of the more wet areas of our property, which is weird because it slopes. But the soil right here just hangs on to moisture. And I spaced them in a way that they will touch once they are mature so that it can kind of be this nice carpet of Campanula right here. And then I want to tuck some big hostas, like a big Empress Wu back in here, something with huge texture, and maybe another one back in here and some smaller ones in here, just things that have more of a bold leaf right back there. But I love it. They are such pretty plants. The light looks kind of weird right now, so hopefully you can see them. And you guys, that is going to do it for today's projects. In fact, the next couple of videos might be a little bit on the shorter side uh, just because it's so hot. So we're trying to get things done either early in the morning or just stay out for far less time. I need to go around right now and just check things for water, even though we've got most everything on drip. On days where it's, you know, 100 plus, some things need just a tiny bit extra. So I'm going to go around and check everything for that. But I'm so happy with all of these purple blooming plants. Uh, I did want to mention that the butterfly bushes, I plant a little bit high. So the root ball is a little bit higher than the soil level because the number one thing that will kill a butterfly bush is water settling and having that root ball rot uh, or the crown of the plant rot. So you don't want water running into that that stem, that branch that's coming up out of the ground. You want it running away. So I pop them up not this far, but like an inch or so, half an inch to an inch up above soil level. I still mound soil around it so that all the roots are covered, but there's definitely water running away from the crown of the plant rather than running to it. And that's pretty important. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.